Hi, and welcome to CSCMP's Member Mondays. I'm your host, Timothy Pajak, and I'm the Membership Engagement Manager here at CSCMP. Today, we're very excited to have Jim Becker, CEO of Becker Logistics, which is based in Carroll Stream, Illinois. Jim truly has one of the more unique and diverse backgrounds of our members, and I really look forward to discussing that and how it influences his place in supply chain. You know, Jim is both a former professional dancer and a retired Chicago firefighter who flew helicopters. Jim, welcome and thank you for your CSCMP membership. Well, good morning, Timothy, and it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for asking me to do an interview with you, Timothy. Jim, I, I definitely want to have a discussion about your unique background, but first let's start with your company. Uh, tell me more about what Becker Logistics does and who your core customers are, why you started the firm, anything you want to tell us about the company. Absolutely. Well, May is uh, our 26th year in business. We started back in 1997. And to give you an idea what we are doing now today, we're, we're shipping over 400 shipments every single day. Most of those are truckload. We do LTL as well. Majority of what we're doing is van freight. Second would be refrigerated and uh, protect from freezing. And then next would be flatbed, um, rail, intermodal, and also LTL. Uh, the flatbed, of course, as well. So majority of what we ship is food grade materials, all the way from the seasoning seasons, um, all the way up to finished goods, frozen goods, uh, canned goods, uh, liquid, alcohol. So a lot of that is about 60% of what we do. Then outside of that, we do flatbed, uh, building materials, uh, raw materials, finished goods uh, for consumers. So a lot of distribution center uh, transfers as well. And we're just really there for our customers to help them build their business, support their customers, and be able to have an alliance with the over 100,000 carriers that we have under contract. What's the background of the company? What made you uh, What made you start the company? Well, before starting the company in 1997, for two years, I worked as a traffic manager for a manufacturer, a prison uh, furniture manufacturer, actually. And then before that, I worked for a uh, brokerage as well as an, an asset-based company. And I was on their executive team for many years from 1991 to 1995. Jim, in, in your uh, Meet a Member profile, which uh, was published earlier this year, we, we asked um, about your three top responsibilities as CEO. And I think you indicated those were you know, vision for the company, growth, mergers and acquisitions. Tell, tell us, what do you see ahead for Becker in the second half of 2023? Well, the second half is going to be much better than the first half. The first half, we've been in a freight recession now for about seven to eight months. And as we go through that, what we basically did is we just did some restructuring to align uh, our services better and our human capital. So as we move forward, uh, we did do an acquisition in December of 2021. We acquired Trek Freight Services. They were a $42 million uh, freight brokerage. And before that, we, were, we did an acquisition in November of 2017 of a $20 million freight brokerage. So not only are we growing organically, but we're also th growing through acquisitions as well. As we get into the second half of 2023, we're looking at adding on another freight brokerage through M&A, or maybe even pushing that off until 2024, as we go ahead and get more comfortable with the freight market that we're currently under. You know, and what's the biggest challenge you're facing on the, on the job and how are you managing it? Is it this growth or is it you know, the, the, the slowdown that some folks have experienced? What, what, what are you uh, facing right now? Yeah, well, the number of loads that we're shipping, we're still shipping over 400 loads a day. So that's going really well. We've got some really great customers, over 600 customers that ship with us on a regular basis. And those customers are really happy with our services. And the one thing that I would say is our biggest challenge is the revenue per shipment. So over the last 30 plus months, um, our revenue per shipment did uptick uh, dramatically over the whole COVID process. And since then, we've given back majority of those gains back to the customer, where we're back to where we were beginning of 2020, and our revenue per shipment, which totally understand. So we're in a deflationary market. 
in transportation and have been for quite some time, probably since April of 2022, we saw that downturn actually happen. And I believe that we're probably at the bottom right now where you're probably going to see some asset-based companies will probably go out of business at this point in time because it's just not affordable to move the freight at the rates that they're currently at. And with the higher employment uh, charges, as well as the cost that it takes to really do transportation nowadays. And do you think there's any you know, technology or other you know, disruptive forces that might ha have an impact either favorably or unfavorably on, on some of that? Yeah, I, we started writing our own software in 2019. A lot of that software helps us really predict what the market's going to do as well as automate majority of what we're doing. So some of that is in place and it's working really well for us right now. The, but we're really have to go back to our core competency. And that's really customer service with our customers, making sure that we're giving them the value added um, transaction on a daily basis. So as we're going through, we're making sure that we're honoring, number one, our word, what we say we're going to do and when we're going to do it. So we're honoring that word with our customers that really keeps us up a front of our competition. In addition to that is our authenticity. We're really honest, brutally with our customers, exactly where the freight is. They have built up the opportunity of really understanding that that's what we offer them on every single shipment. So from our customer service team to our account management team to our carrier sales team, we're constantly dealing with transportation. And as you know, as the ups and downs of transportation, we get to gratitude immediately when things are good and we get to acceptance when things aren't. So we basically get to that equilibrium point and we try to maintain that equilibrium point for our customers on every single shipment each and every day. I want to turn our attention to you a little bit. You know, what brought you to CSCMP? What made you join? Um, I, I think you've been a member for coming up on two years now. So uh, what brought you here? Well, our uh, CFO, um, he, he came from Morton Salt and before that, Robert Bosch for many years. And he mentioned, you know, we should really be there to be part of this whole great organization. And so with that, you know, looking at new opportunities, where are we currently not at that our customers are at? A lot of our customers were at your convention last year down in Nashville, and it was a great time. And it gave us an opportunity to really meet with our customers and talk about synergies and how we could continue to grow together. In addition to that, we were able to find some new customers as well. So that's why, you know, partnering with the right partners in this world of transportation is what we've always done and we'll continue to do that into the near future. Yeah, that collaboration and, and networking with with partners and it, it kind of speaks to what you said about being transparent with with customers too is you know it's that it's that relationship you build with the people that work for these customers or a vendor um, that that really you know makes the difference in, in us being able to succeed together, right? Um, but I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the networking piece of it. Um, you're fairly active on LinkedIn. I think I saw some of your video content on leadership, uh, other topics like that long before you joined CSCMP. How, how do you see, you know, your role as an active content provider on LinkedIn, you know, benefit and benefiting your company? Uh, what advice do you have for other supply chain professionals on how they can leverage their activity on LinkedIn? Talk a little bit about that for us. Yeah, it's a way of giving back. Um, back in 2019, as we continued to grow and, and be, you know, last year in 2022, we, we did $176 million in revenue. And that put us at 77th on the transportation topics, uh, top 100 freight brokers. So as we continue to grow that way, uh, I had an idea back in 2019 to really engage our network and, and all the people that I'm connected to in the transportation marketplace. So in, on LinkedIn alone, I'm, I'm connected with 30,000 professionals. Pretty much majority, I would say 90% of them, are in the transportation network facility, if you will, either a freight broker, customer, carrier. And what I leveraged there was a way to give back to the community. 
all the things that I did initially when I started Becker Logistics, how do I give that information back? How do I give the relevant information out as well? Uh, from a CEO's perspective, a sales manager's perspective, or just the new employee that's just getting into the transportation market. So I developed a plan, a market plan, to really just bring that information and content out to give it freely to anyone that wanted to listen. I was shocked to see exactly how well that took off. I post every single day during the week. And out of that week, I usually do one or two videos where I'm really getting that information out and I make it fun and entertaining. What's nice about this, a lot of people know me first through the videos. And then second, they identify me when they meet me that I'm exactly like I am on the videos. I'm, why not? That's who I am. I'm authentic with everything I do. I believe that every professional leader or of an organization should be out there really engaging with their customers, engaging with future employees, as well as getting the word out there of what's really going on in the marketplace so that we all can share and really grow together. And that's why it's out there. Speaking of fun and, and entertaining, uh, I, I want to talk about this uh, because I think it's it's just so fascinating. So how, how's, how's being a professional dancer and, and a helicopter pilot, how's that influenced your role as a CEO of a logistics company? Well, one thing that I would say is it really broadens an individual when they're reaching themselves out into areas that they don't know. Like there was a point in time I was not a helicopter pilot. By learning something new, it really broadens your mind on how to bring things together. I called it Project H. So throughout the year, I'm doing so many projects as a CEO, working with team members, working with customers, working with carriers, I'm really broadening themselves and their businesses. What I did also was broaden myself to really dive into areas that I didn't know. So I could expand myself and actually use additional resources, different vocabulary to describe from a conceptual to a realized environment, and even an experience. These different experiences like dancing, being a professional dancer, choreographer, um, taking on students and, and helping them grow as an individual, getting on a stage and a competition with them, and choreographing these different patterns to go in sync with mus music and having that musicality no matter what happens on the stage or on the, in that performance, you really have to react to every single condition that's out there, from the floor condition to what's happening with your partner to what's happening out there in the ballroom. So in this, the idea that I have, that I've used for myself, is really expand, expand on your horizons. Learn something that you're uncomfortable with. Get comfortable with the uncomfortableness. And really expand that because it brings in a whole nother wealth of vocabulary to what you're dealing with. And you're able to describe to people or relate to people more in tune to who they are. And it really helps you to listen more, to become that listening for other individuals as you broaden yourself. Instead of just being a one trick pony, if you will, I could just be a transportation logistics guru and in the freight brokerage realm and only stay in that, that really kind of like pigeon toes me just to that. There's so much more that really helps me um, bring new ideas, new inventions to the transportation market that I'm in. And this is, this is what I call home as a freight broker. Yeah, it's like that saying, uh, what is it? Life begins at the edge of your com comfort zone, right? Absolutely. Uh, fascinating stuff. I love it. Um, you know, we're, we're just about out of time here, but I want to, um, you know, kind of give you an opportunity. What's something I didn't ask you that you'd like other CSCMP members to know about you or know about your company? Anything you want to share there? Yeah, I believe having faith, believing in something. Like I'm a Christian. And I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins. And through that, anything's possible. Going through life by yourself without any type of faith or religion is kind of like being lost in my mind, right? Having that support, having the armor of God protecting us on a daily basis 
being able to know that you can deal with anything at any time, that's what life's all about. And it doesn't matter what religion you are. It doesn't matter what you believe in. Just as long as you have that belief and, and you're following that faith, because that faith gets you through the hard times. It gets you right to gratitude when things are going well. And it allows you when things aren't going well and, you, and something bad happens, like my mother-in-law ended up in the hospital on Friday with chest pains. You know, when that happens, you automatically like feel like a, that pit in your stomach. What I've learned through my faith and my spirituality, it allows me to get to acceptance quicker. When I get to acceptance quicker in anything that I do, I'm able to consciously think exactly what is it, what's the best pathway to get through this. Now, luckily, my mother-in-law is doing great, and she had pneumonia. That's what was going on. And she was babysitting our nine-year-old daughter, Brooke. And that leadership that our nine-year-old demonstrated by calling my wife, because my wife and I were at a party, and when, when she got that call and our nine-year-old was able to get through that whole process to the point where an ambulance came and picked her up, my mother-in-law, you know, those are the things that we really need in our life. And it doesn't matter how we get there. You know, I believe in God, right? And so that's my cornerstone and my listening that I listen everyone from. As long as we have something that we can rely on, and, and build that faith and have that foundation of integrity in our life. And that gives me credibility in what's possible in life. And I keep going on that thread or that, that edge of change to really broaden who we are and then bring the people that I lead to that same salvation as well. Thanks for sharing that. That's, I mean, I'm really glad that your mother-in-law is doing it okay. Um, Thank you. I, I can really relate with this this story, and I'll share more about that off, offline. But you know, that's all the time we have today, um, Jim. Thank you so much for your membership with CSCMP. Appreciate you joining us for this edition of Member Mondays. Thank you so much, Timothy. I really do appreciate, it. and what a great organization. I really do appreciate everything that you guys do, all the things that I see, and all the things that I don't see, as well as the rest of the members here. Thank you so much, Timothy. Thanks, Jim.